Hey guys! Today we're going to be making a miniature quiche, which some of you have been requesting. I chose to make the type I usually cook myself, which is leek and bacon, so I really hope you'll enjoy. First we're going to be making the mold for the crust, and for this I started out with some scrap clay, then stacked a few sheets and cut out a circle that is a bit smaller than what I wanted the crust to be. You then want to take a sheet of clay and use either the back of your blade or a needle tool to make some ridges. And depending on the tool you choose, you're just going to get a slightly different effect. Cut that into a strip that is as wide as you want the crust to be tall. And then wrap this around the base. I pushed in what is currently the top to make sure it really stuck, then flipped it around and then flared out what is the new top edge to make it slanted. After pre-baking I added some clay to the bottom to hide the seams, and then after baking again I made a mold. And remember, if you have any questions about the tools and materials you see me using in these videos, I do have a video about it which I'll link in the info box. For the crust, I used this light dough color. I first rolled out a thin sheet and then cut out an absolutely perfect circle. You can then dust on some cornstarch to one side if you want, and this is the side that's not going to touch the mold, so the side that's going to face up. And I then just used my dotting tools to push it into the mold. And the reason why I add cornstarch to the side that is facing up is so that the clay is going to stick to the mold rather than the tools. I used my X-Acto knife to cut off any excess clay and then used a silicone tool to just really make sure it goes into all the crevices. Next I took this off white color which is going to be the egg base. Then cut a circle which is going to fit inside of the crust and then use my tools to first spread it out toward the edges and also to add some texture on top. I know these clips are a bit too bright, unfortunately there is nothing I can do about it, but you should be able to see the texture. It's really nothing special, it's just kind of bumpy or kind of bubbly looking. You don't have to be too particular about it though, because depending on the recipe you used or the way you cooked it, the look can vary a lot. Once I was happy with the first layer of texture, I just used a toothbrush to add some more texture. To make the leak, I mixed up a couple of shades of green with some translucent, cut some really thin strips and then used a toothbrush to add some texture. And for the texture, I'm using the toothbrush in a brushing motion rather than a dabbing motion. Place these randomly onto the quiche, and you also want to make sure that you save some of the pieces for later. To make the cube bacon, I first took a few shades of some scrap clay and mixed those together, rolled out a thin sheet, then cut that into thin strips and cut that into tiny cubes. Add 
And just like with the lid, you want to place these on top, making sure to save some for later. Next, I took the quiche out of the mold and for this I actually left it overnight, mostly because I didn't have time to finish it the first day I was working on it. But if your clay is kind of soft, it's going to be a lot easier to take it out if you leave it for a few hours or overnight. The fact that I didn't take it out of the mold until the day after is also the reason why it's kind of flopping around on my sculpting base because the clay is no longer as sticky. For the texture and the crust, I first used a needle tool all the way around and then finished off using a toothbrush. Once you're done, you can cut a slice and add some texture to the inside. Once again, the look of the texture can vary a lot depending on just the recipe or the ingredients that were used. For the one, I chose to make the texture looks kind of like a cheesecake, so I first used a pointy dotting tool to make a rather bumpy texture making sure that it's not too smooth because an omelette or any other type of eggy base is gonna have some texture but you also don't want it to be too rough because it's just gonna end up looking like a normal slice of cake. And for the texture on the inside of the crust, I just used a needle tool. Next, we're going to make it look like it actually has the filling on the inside as well. For some of the pieces, I place them kind of like just on the surface of the clay and for other pieces, I used a needle tool to dig a small hole or a groove and then put the pieces into that. This is just a quick message from me from the future. Continuing the voiceover I started way too long ago. Now, I do want to apologize if the rest of the voiceover is going to be kept pretty short. I am having some technical difficulties with my microphone, even though I just purchased a new one. I have bought a new laptop, which I'm going to get next week, so hopefully that's gonna help. After baking you want to add some shading, I first went in with a couple of shades of soft pastel and I applied these with a damp brush. I first added some shading to the crust and then later went in and added some shading to the egg portion. Once again, depending on the look you're going for or how long your quiche has been cooked, you can keep it lighter or darker. Personally, as you may know, I prefer a quite rustic look. Once I was about happy with the first layer of shading, I sealed it with a matte glaze.
I then finished off the shading with a couple of shades of acrylic paint. I first went in with the lighter shade just to get kind of like an all-over shading and then after doing that I went in with the darker tone and added some to the edges. Then you just want to finish off with some glass glaze and you're done.